Hallo, so schön, dass du da bist hier beim Podcast Happy, Holy and Confident, dein Podcast fürs Herz und den Verstand. Mein Name ist Laura Marlina Seiler und ich hoffe, es geht dir gut. Ich hoffe, du bist voller Vorfreude auf diese Podcast-Folge, denn ich habe hier heute einen ganz wunder, wunder, wundervollen Gesprächspartner und zwar Swami Puna Chaitanya, ein wundervoller Mensch, der unter anderem Autor ist, spiritueller Lehrer, und dessen Thema ist oder womit er sich immer wieder beschäftigt, wie wir gerade in so einer turbulenten Welt, in der wir einfach leben, in unsere innere Ruhe finden können, in unsere spirituelle Anbindung finden können und Glück finden können. Und genau darüber spreche ich mit ihm. Wie finden wir Glück? Wie können wir unser Leben eigentlich zu einem richtigen Kunstwerk werden lassen? Wie können wir mit Herausforderungen umgehen? Warum ist es so wichtig, auch ins Dienen zu kommen, ins Beitragen zu kommen und wie wir unsere Spiritualität Qualität eben auch im Alltag leben können. Es ist also ein sehr spirituell schön aufgeladenes Gespräch für all die Menschen da draußen, die da gerne tiefer eintauchen möchten und wo du für dich einfach schauen kannst, wie kannst du deine eigene Spiritualität noch stärker in deinem Alltag integrieren, in deinem Leben integrieren und für dich zum Ausdruck bringen. Und ich wünsche dir ganz, ganz viel Freude mit diesem Gespräch. Ich hoffe, du kannst viel für dich mitnehmen und so ein richtiges, ist so ein, das Gespräch ist so ein kleiner Glückskeks, würde ich sagen, so ein kleines glückskeks -Pod. Podcast-Gespräch, wo man danach das Gefühl hat, ja, jetzt ist die Welt wieder ein bisschen besser als vorher. Also ganz viel Freude dabei, so schön, dass du da bist und wie immer, komm natürlich super gerne danach bei Instagram vorbei, at Laura Marlina Seiler und lass mir deine Gedanken zu der Folge da. Viel Spaß mit dem Interview. I am so happy and grateful to have you on the show and I'm really, really excited to have like one of the masters kind of of meditation and the knowledge about meditation, the mind and how we can dive into ourselves. So welcome to the show. So, so good to have you here. Thank you so much, Laura. It's truly a pleasure. How are you? How do you start? into your day? What is your, your spiritual practice to maybe ground yourself, to set an intention? Do you have a specific morning routine? Um, yes, yes, I do. Uh, it, it may vary a little when I travel a lot or when I'm conducting retreats or programs. Uh, you know, it may sometimes be the case that I'm still in a bus or a flight mm -hmm. or just have to get up really early to attend to my participants. But uh, as a regular routine, I would say, uh, yes, I uh, get up early. Um, usually, I would say like five, little before five o'clock, maybe 4.35, because uh, it's really nice and quiet, you know. And then uh, I do take a shower. I brush my teeth, as is recommended for all people. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I, uh, I, I mean, actually, even before that, when I wake up, there is a small practice I have learned. Uh, which really appealed to me. And that is when I wake up, the first thing I do before I even get out of the bed or whatever place I'm sleeping is uh, there is a small prayer, like a, a mantra, which I chant a few times, basically, which has the, yeah, the intention or the, the idea behind it, the meaning that before I put my feet on the, on the earth, it's like a small prayer that uh, may my, my life may I myself not be a burden to the earth. You know, mm -hmm. it's very beautiful. It says that, you know, in a way, walking around here, doing whatever we're doing, that itself is also like, it's like a karma. No, you're, you're, it, has an, it has an effect. And of course, unfortunately, nowadays, it is very clear that us human beings are not maybe so aligned with nature anymore, that it is very sustainable. I mean, we see this, there is a lot of pollution, you know. So, and not just on the physical level. I mean, if you see that there's so much of stress, so much of uh, anxiety, worry, um, maybe sometimes frustration. So that's also a kind of, you can say, mental pollution. Mm. And it's a beautiful way I feel to start the day to consciously, even before I put my foot on the, on the ground, to say, okay, yes, let me start this day again with a small prayer that my, my life may not be a burden on this, on this planet. So you start with that. That I did. And then I take a bath. Um, and then I first, I meditate for some time, maybe 30, 40 minutes. Um, 
And after that, I have a, a few more practices. There are some mantras which I have learned. It's a small, uh, you can say, ceremony. We repeat the mantras, chant the mantras, and uh, a few more prayers like that. Uh, and then after that, I do some yoga, some asanas, some stretches. Uh, it's nice also after a whole day lying in bed, body may be a little stiff. Uh, mm -hmm. Some breathing techniques, pranayamas. And a special breathing technique, which I have learned from my master, uh, Gurudev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, the founder of Art of Living. Uh, so he's taught us a technique called Sudarshan Kriya. It's a breathing technique that's it's very effective, very powerful. So to balance the, the body, the mind, uh, energize yourself for the day. And that gives me a beautiful package where I'm, you can say, all aligned, charged up uh, yeah, for the day, whatever comes. And it's interesting, maybe for those who know a little bit about Ayurveda also, the, you know, the ancient science of health, medicine, well-being from, from India, also becoming more popular, of course, nowadays. So there they teach us that different parts of the day also have a certain quality. They call it the, the doshas or svata, pitta, kapha. Some of people have heard about it probably. And actually from two to six in the morning is the vata time which means that the air and space element are more predominant. So that is why if you wake up before six, the mind is much more clear. Uh, you have more energy. You feel a little bit more active. Uh, so it's a very nice time to, to meditate, to, uh, to set your intentions, you know, because you have more clarity. If you wake up after six, it's the kapha time. So then you may feel a little bit more dull. Or you know, sometimes people may have noticed that uh, you feel a little less like coming out of your bed. You want to stay a little longer. Uh, it takes some more time to to get going. Maybe you want to have some, you know, some nice music or first or a cup of tea or coffee. But even if you sleep shorter, you know, sometimes you have to wake up early to catch a flight. Say you're going for a holiday and you wake up really early, like four o'clock, five o'clock. But then even though you may have not slept as much, so you may even physically still be a little bit tired. But you feel much more awake and much more alert. Your mind is much more clear. So, so like that, these are some life hacks that I've picked up along the way where just understanding a little more about how nature works and how our body and mind works and how it's connected. You can use some of these principles to, yeah, to be much more effective during your day. Right? It makes mm -hmm. life a little easier where you're, you can say, swimming with the current rather than trying to go against the current. Can you tell us a little bit about the breathing technique that you learned from um, your teacher that you mentioned? Uh, yes, uh, I can. Um, to, to learn it properly, we have a course because it takes two, three days for people to, you know, you should learn it from a teacher. You know, it's not yeah, something just to do from a book because for some techniques, it's okay. But, you know, if there's someone who can correct you, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. people ask me, why can't you make a YouTube video? You know, now YouTube is very easy. But then a YouTube video will not correct you. So you may be thinking you're doing it right. But, but of course, once you have learned it, you can practice it anytime, anywhere. So this technique, it's called the uh, Sudarshana Kriya. Uh, it's a Kriya. Kriya means it's a purifying technique, yogic breathing technique. And what we do is we use different rhythms in the breath to uh, align the different uh, aspects of ourselves. Uh, this may sound a little vague for people, but to put it practically, say, no, we have a body. I mean, everybody's aware you have a body, you can feel it, touch it. But we are not just the body. And somewhere we know this because sometimes we say, oh, you know, today it's like, you know, uh, I don't feel good in my body or like my body feels very tired or very stiff. You don't say I feel very stiff. You know? So somewhere we know that, okay, you're able to observe it, which means you're able to take a step back. That means you're not just that. And in the same way, uh, you can say our breathing, the breath also keeps changing. If you observe those of us who are a little more uh, attentive, you will notice that the way you breathe also keeps changing throughout the day. And especially when we go through different emotions, they each have their own unique rhythm in the breath. You know, mm -hmm. Like when you're really angry, a person breathes differently. You know, it may be <laughs> like very short and shallow. And same way when you're emotional. No, it's a different rhythm. When you feel very happy or relaxed, relieved, you know, like you finished your final exams, finally you're done with school. <sighs> There's this long, like the, the inhalation is more prominent. Mm -hmm. When you're really worried about something, when you're tense or, you know, 
then you may notice that your exhalation is more prominent. Mm -hmm. So a lot of research has been done also in Europe, some of the universities where they found that, uh, and other parts of the world as well, where they found that there are these specific rhythms in the breath connected to different emotions and state of mind. And this is the same across the world, irrespective of your upbringing. You know, this is just how it works. But then if you breathe in those rhythms, it also means that you can consciously invoke those emotions, those states of mind. So, so there is a, a definite connection between our breathing and the way we feel. And then, of course, when you feel that has an impact again on your physiology, you produce certain hormones, whether it is stress hormones or hormones that make you feel peaceful and happy. And in the same way, our, our mind also, if you look a little closer, can be subdivided into different aspects. There is one part of you that perceives through the senses, like right now we are speaking, the sound is hitting your eardrum, but if you're not really paying attention to me, but you're worried that, oh, you know, I still have to get something for my mom's birthday tomorrow, or maybe your boyfriend just broke up with you and you're really worried about that or something. And then what happens, even though the sound hits your ear, it doesn't really register. So there is a part of us that pays attention, not that we can call it the mind. Uh, and then in the, the Vedic scriptures, in the scriptures of yoga, they say, but it's not just that. There is also a part that remembers all your past impressions. You know, that They call it memory. There is a part also that, that judges, that discriminates, that if you experience something, say you're hearing something that I'm saying, there is also a part of you that says, oh, yes, this I agree. This, this is my experience or this I have seen, this I know, this I have read. So you agree with it. And some things you may say, oh, this is, no, this is not true, I think, or this I don't know. This is not my experience. So that is something they call that intellect or uh, there's a nice Sanskrit word for it as well. But that is that which discriminates. And then they say that is one part which is even more subtle, which makes you feel that you are you. They call mm -hmm. it the ahankara or the ego. So there is something that makes you feel separate from your surrounding. You know? So that is the concept that we have of ourselves, where you say, okay, this is me and this is you, or this is the other, or this is something else. And that includes also the, the ideas that we have or the conditioning that um, who am I, uh, what am I like? You know? So how you see yourself, uh, but also how you how you think other people see you and how you want other people to see you. Mm -hmm. So all of that is, is connected. And, and all these things change if you observe throughout your life, you know, the way you see yourself, how you think about yourself, how you want others to see you, you know, the, the, the values that you have, then that you say, okay, what is important for me in life? As a child, your, your goals or your priorities are very different. Then your body changes. That's very obvious. Uh, the way we breathe keeps changing, as we saw, the, the thoughts that we have, the mind, our memory also, the way, uh, you know, what we remember and also how we remember it. Maybe something that happened a few years ago was very traumatic at that point in time, was very difficult. So even thinking about it would maybe make you feel a little uneasy or sad. But then a few years later, you may look back at it and say, oh, but this was a blessing in disguise. You know, it is it has put me on a different path or I have learned so much or otherwise I would have never met this person or gotten this job or started this project. And our intellect at which judges keeps changing because what we say is right or wrong or good or bad changes a lot. You know, Many years back, not even so many people may have said that, oh, you know, uh, a vegetarian diet is, is, is not at all okay. You know, you're going to be you're not going to have the nutrition that you need. And while now people say, no, no, forget about vegetarian. We should go vegan. You know, it's much more healthy. So our priorities also personally, what we think is important, what is good keeps changing. So all these things, all these different aspects or layers of ourself, of, of your personality, of who you are, what you are, they keep changing. But just like with a, you can say with a, orchestra or a band, if you have people playing different instruments, if they are not in sync, if they're not aligned or attuned, then the result is not so nice. Mm -hmm. Like if everybody is playing in a different scale or in a different tune or a different pace, 
then we don't call it music. You call it noise. It's, it's not nice to listen to. But when they're all attuned, that is when it becomes very beautiful, very enjoyable. Then we say, oh, this is, this is music. It's, it's an art. Or if you have a guitar, if the strings are not tuned properly, then even if you play it very nicely, it doesn't sound good. But if they're tuned really well, even someone who doesn't know how to play the guitar, who just like, like ding, 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 you know, who just plucks the, it still sounds nice because they're in harmony. So this beautiful breathing technique, the Sudarshan Kriya that, that I learned, that we are teaching also to people, it, what it does is it uses the rhythms of the breath because the breath is something very practical. We can work with it. You know, it's something you can do. We use those different rhythms to, again, align all those different layers. So mm -hmm. it's creating a harmony in all these different parts of you, these different aspects of your, of you, of your existence. And maybe that is why many years back they called these programs the art of living. Because living, I mean, existing is, is, is not difficult. You know, you get born, you are born. Uh, you eat, sleep, work, die, you become happy, sad. You do all those things. There's nothing great about that. But living in the sense that you're able to really enjoy and appreciate the, yourself, the world around you, that you're able to contribute something positive wherever you go. That irrespective of the situation, you can be peaceful. You can be happy. And you're able to connect with people, no? feel, feel connected, feel at home. And then wherever you go, your presence itself becomes a, a blessing to people there. You will add something positive. Just like someone who is stressed can create stress wherever they go, can make people feel uneasy or agitated. Someone who is very peaceful, who is very happy, who is very content, who is very caring or, or you know, uh, who, empathic. Such a person can spread that positivity or that, that human values or that feel-good vibe, you can say, wherever you go. And living like that is an art. Yes. And art means it's something that everybody can learn. You know, if you have five fingers, ten fingers, you know, two hands, everybody can learn how to play the guitar. But to really make it an art, one, you need to have a teacher, someone who can show you that speeds up the process a lot. You can learn on your own, but it takes much more time to figure it out. So if you have a good teacher, they can teach you the, the principles and then you need to practice. And you can really master that art. And, and living is, is such an art. It's true. It's beautifully said. Absolutely. It's, it's a beautiful picture to really say, well, I mean, yeah, you can just go through life, like spending the time you have being very unconscious and just walk through it. And like you said, or you can make it this art, like this beautiful um, time of being completely there in yourself. Um, I have so many questions. Um, <clears throat> okay. So <laughs> one thing uh, you, you talk about and also where your book is mainly about is how to really stay in this peaceful place inside of yourself um, in the midst of, uh, let's say, chaos around you. Um, and this chaos can be all, or let's say, let's call it like disharmony, right? Like mm. in all different ways. Maybe it's in a personal relationship. Maybe it's in your workplace. Maybe it's the global political situation, maybe it's um, the, the global warming. I mean, there's so many things in the outside where we can say they are definitely not in sync. <laughs> they are, they, they like, they are. Yeah, they're not conducive to feeling happy and peaceful. Yes. And holy and confident. <laughs> yeah, more like so in the other direction, right? They are, they are triggering yes. us. They are making us afraid. Exactly. Um, so what would you say um, out of your experience, and you just said it, it's you need a teacher and you need to practice. Um, what is a way, how can, how can you really um, effectively practice um, staying connected to yourself? And, um, and let's make it really concrete to, to, to an example mm. everyone knows. Maybe um, you are going through a breakup. You, you said it before, you're going through a breakup yeah. and 
your ex-partner or ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend is making your life really difficult and I don't know, and really stressing you out. Um, how do you stay calm? How do you stay peaceful? How do you get out of being triggered? Because usually, especially in our romantic relationships, right, are like the biggest triggers of yeah. everything inside of us. Um, so how, how ca can you stay calm? And maybe if, if for the person who's listening, it's not the relationship, maybe it's a job relationship, maybe it's yeah. um, some other sort of, of, of um, happening in the outside that is making us crazy inside. How do we calm down? How do we stay true to ourselves? How do we stay connected? And how, how do we also release the, the emotions that are difficult to, to hold? So here, Laura, I have a few tips. Um, of course, like you said, I've written a whole book about it. So uh, to do justice to that also, if people really want to explore more, definitely they can do that there. But already to make it, to get to really to the point, um, there are a few things you mentioned to deal with the emotions, especially after they've come up. It has been my personal experience and that of many more people, thousands of people that I have personally taught and is that, um, that it's good to have a practical tool. So like I said, like, uh, I'm very fortunate. I have this Sudarshan Kriya technique, uh, and I've seen also, you know, one is the intellectually understanding and working with it looking at it, but then some things also, you can release it on a, in a much more direct manner, you know, mm -hmm. like you can physically work with it. So breathing techniques are a tool that can be very effective just to get some things out of your system, you know, oh. to, to balance it on that level. But that is like, you know, you have a problem and then you're trying to cure it. But like you mentioned, it would be so much nicer if you can already manage it while it's coming at you. Mm -hmm. And maybe even at some point becoming so resilient that it doesn't enter your system anymore or that it just mm -hmm. bounces off. And here, one thing that has been such a precious insight for me on this journey, like I have been learning, practicing these things for over 20 years now. I was very lucky. I, I was looking for something authentic at the age of 16. And I mean, even before that, but at the age of 16, I found it and I caught it with both hands. I jumped at it and that gave me a nice, uh, head start. Uh, so I saved that way. I saved uh, a lot of the, the problems, I think, because already, you know, you know, teenage time and then college and, you know, this is where you can really get beaten up emotionally, but yeah. I had a good, uh, a good, uh, what you say, resilience already. But the thing is that in the ancient scriptures of the, the Vedic tradition, also yoga, there's a beautiful principle they say kashtasya sukasya nakopi data this is sanskrit but it literally means that nobody is the giver of sorrow of suffering of misery or of happiness which means if you really look at it carefully you will find that nobody can really make you happy or sad and you cannot really make anybody happy or sad because you will find that If you're saying, okay, today my boss shouted at me, you know, I, I so sincerely did my work, but you know, someone else took credit or it was not appreciated or whatever it is. And you say, oh, that's why I feel crappy. You know, I have a bad day. You come home, maybe your partner is waiting for you or your friends are, and you're like, oh, you look like, you know, well, I not say something bad word, but you look terrible. And then you say, yeah, no, because my boss shouted at me or this happened, or, you know, my boyfriend broke up with me, whatever it may be. I lost my job or this happened. Now, you can say, oh, that's very bad. Poor you, you know, should not happen. And, but then because we think, oh, it's because my boss shouted at me or because X, Y, Z happened. That is why I feel bad. Then it's something outside of us. You know, it's something we cannot control. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that you will be able to find people in exactly the same situation or a very similar situation who are not affected by it. You know, you, you may see people who they lose a job and they're okay. They're not really bothered. Or you may someone who, you know, their, their boyfriend, girlfriend breaks up with them and they seem to be okay. You know, there are some people who, who may be sick and they're okay with it. There are some people who may be jobless and they're fine with it. You know? 
So if you really look at it, it's not really the situations or the things that we go through mm -hmm. that make us feel miserable or uncomfortable or stressed. It is the way we experience them, how we look at it, how we perceive it. It is our conditioning. And in the same way, you may find that some people, whatever you do, you try to cheer them up. You know, you want them to like you, love you, or you just want to help them. And whatever you do, you can pamper them, make them a millionaire, and still they will be grumbling or they'll be miserable or, or they may perceive it in a different way. You do something with all good intention and they think, oh, you know, they have something against me or there must be something. So in the end, some people you can, you know, you can put them in the dirt, shout at them, scold them, spit at them, and still they'll be smiling. They will still love you. And some people you can do whatever you can try to do to make them happy or appreciate you and still they will dislike you. So this is something very valuable because when we realize this, that in the end, how I feel, if I feel bad because of something, it's not so much about the other or the situation, it's something in me. And some people may say, oh, that's terrible news, but that's actually very good news because that means you can do something about it. Mm -hmm. That means you are in control because otherwise, if every day for the rest of your life or your, your career, at least, your boss will shout at you at work, sometimes you don't have a choice. You cannot just change your job or, or maybe you have family member that's making your life difficult or a neighbor or it could be anything. But if that doesn't change, that means for the rest of your life, you will be miserable because you feel it's something I cannot do anything about. But if you realize it, oh, yes, but wait a second. There are other people in the same situation who are fine. So, okay, what is it in me that is triggering that? You know what? And then you can start working on it. And then you have these things like the knowledge of how the mind works. Uh, you know, we have meditation, breathing techniques, and all that will really help. But the beauty is also that the moment we realize this, then you also get a clue that that happiness and that peace and that comfort that we are looking for is actually not something outside of us. It is something inside of us. And we just need to learn how to connect to that or how to tap into that. Mm -hmm. Because if you notice, whenever you really enjoy something, let's say your friend brought you this wonderful chocolate from Switzerland, or you, your, your, your partner cooked you this amazing meal, or you went to this new restaurant and it's, it's excellent. You know? or you went to a concert and the music is so beautiful, or a holiday where the scenery is, you know, whatever, you go to Seychelles or Hawaii and you see the sunset and you know something happens inside. Those moments when you really feel that happiness, if you notice, for a moment your eyes will close. You close your eyes and you want to take that experience in. You know, Maybe it could be someone touching, your partner touching you, you feel so nice, for a moment you close your eyes. Hmm? Or you taste something really nice for a moment, you close your eyes. But what we don't realize is that it's not really us who is taking the experience in. It is the experience that is taking us in. Mm. That is taking us inward. Because your eyes close because the mind wants to go inward for a moment. Because that is where you're experiencing that joy and happiness. You, know? you can try smelling a, a rose and without closing your eyes, keep your eyes wide open. You, it, you can't experience it the same way you know? and then if you say oh that was such a nice experience and then you want to have it again so let's go back to that ice cream place or let's go back to that restaurant or that holiday or but usually it doesn't give you that same experience it may still be tasty or nice but it's not the same because it's not in that thing that was just a trigger that for a moment made you go inward and that is why we see and I think during the pandemic, many of us would have had this experience, at least at some point or the other, when we're in lockdown or that everything around you may be fine. You may be healthy, have a beautiful house, have good food, everything. But when we are anxious or when you're stressed, when the mind is not at ease, you cannot enjoy those things, really. There may be such tasty food in front of you. And you're in the most beautiful location and you're about to really enjoy it. And then you get a call. Suddenly your best friend had an accident. They're in the hospital. You know? Now, how are you going to enjoy those things? So 
if we're intelligent and if we're smart, if we're aware, we start realizing that that real lasting peace and happiness that we're actually looking for in all those things is something that is inside of us. And you're able to experience it when the mind calms down, when it's peaceful, and when you're able to go inward. So then instead of running all over the place all the time, trying to get those things that are promising us that happiness, you say, okay, let me invest a little. I'm not saying you go and sit in a monastery all day, but every day taking a little time to invest in that saying, okay, let me learn how to meditate, for example. Let me learn how to consciously go inward, how to calm the mind. And then you start realizing that, oh, that, that joy, that peace that I'm looking for, it's something that is with me all the time. It's just that we need to learn how to get access to it. And the beauty is that the more you start experiencing that, then you find that throughout the day, you start enjoying everything more because mm. then you're not dependent on something that can trigger that mind going inward. Then you can even the small silly things, doing your taxes or sitting in an office or sitting in a traffic jam can start making you feel so good because it's actually not that making you feel good. You're already feeling good. You know? So then it's not your happiness. It's not dependent on what you're doing or where you are. And we all know this because somewhere we have all had this experience when we were children. Because small children, before our mind gets too complicated, before this ego starts developing that you really feel separate, before you start worrying about the future and, you know, being upset about the past. Small children, they don't have that yet. The mind is still, it's still developing. So they're still very much in the present moment. So if you notice small children, they can be, you know, fighting over a toy now. Maybe someone took your toy. You're playing in the sandbox pit. In, or in the beach, and then some boy took your toy and you're very upset. And one hour later, you're happily playing together. No. And tomorrow, you don't remember that that person took your toy. No. You wake up in the morning, you jump out of your bed, and you say, oh, it's a beautiful day, let's play. You're not thinking, oh, what will happen after one year? Or, you know? so, and that is why small children can just be playing with some small pebbles or with a stick or just looking at the at these birds in the sky and they're very happy because... It's not because of those things that happiness is our nature. It is just that when we forget how to access that or it gets covered with all the stress and the expectations and worries and dreams, and that is when it becomes more difficult to feel. Mm. And that is why uh, in the book also, this is one of the main uh, quotes which I really like that this, this knowledge and this outlook on life and these practices can help us to make a beautiful shift rather it happens it happens to us naturally when we pay a little bit of attention on these things that instead of living life as a pursuit of happiness we can start living our life as an expression of happiness and yeah, that's beautiful where we do all these things not because we think or hope that they will make us happy we can do those things happily so I'm not saying don't go for a beautiful holiday, have a nice house, have a wonderful partner, have good food, do all those things, but you should be able to enjoy it also. And this is how you can really enjoy it. And whenever those things are not there, or in case you go through a breakup, or, you know, there is problems at work or this or that, you'll find that even then, you will still have that peace and calm inside because you're not dependent on those things. You've not conditioned your own peace and happiness by those things. Yeah. And you will find that when we do talk about relationships, of course, I'm a monk. Uh, I'm not in any relationship. I'm not going to be. I took an exit, <laughs> but I can have this, this advice for people because even I have friendships. No, I have good friends. I have people I love. I appreciate. You will find that when you become so content, it is not that it's going to affect, not that you say, oh, but then how will I have my relationships or how will I care for my friends if I don't need anything? Or, you know, like they think this passion or being detached means, you know, you have nothing to do with the world. Actually, it's the other way around. Because you will find when you're so fulfilled that you don't need anything. That is when you can truly say to a person that I am there for you. I am here to give you what you need or what you want, 
I'm not in this relationship or in this friendship because I want to get something out of it because you make me feel better or you complete me or because I feel good when you're around or when I have someone next to me on the couch or when I have someone who calls me once in a while to say that I'm wonderful or that can help me with things. Say, no, I don't need anything. So I can really say, okay, what do you want? So that's very beautiful. It, it will make your relationships in all aspects of life blossom. No, um, I would, I, I have one question because, um, I, I agree with everything you say. So I, I absolutely agree. And this is a way I also try to live my life. Um, nevertheless, I know <laughs> that many people who are maybe also entering right now their, their spiritual path, um, yeah. Sometimes there is this mm, feeling of, but really wanting kind of that the outside is doing something to us, or it's like, it's this, yeah, but I mean, how can I look at it differently? I mean, didn't, didn't you see how this person was talking to me yes. or like, but I, I don't know. I, I come from a poor family. How can you say that? just smile and like mm -hmm. being poor kind of, you know, like if, if we really break yes. it down to also more difficult situation, maybe also um, if we talk about um, like structural discrimination of people, like if there's yes. really something in the outside that is unfair, that is, that is, makes you feel like, yeah, easy to say for you, like, you know, just change it in yeah. the inside if the outside really is difficult like how i mean i mean this is now really next level <laughs> living no but it's, it's very but nice to explore it's, yeah to, it's i think it's important to to really look at it in the depth because um i see there is because i think it's one of the most important things to talk about because this is what some people what is making some people aggressive in the way mm -hmm. of Yeah, it's so easy to say for you, but for me, it is yes. difficult and it is hard and it is difficult to, like, let's take a single mom working yeah. night shifts, having three little kids at home, being left by the, the man. And yes. like, it's difficult. She's exhausted. Like, she's worried how to put food on the table. How, how can that person find that peace how can that person um trust and and use spirituality as a source of hope and mm. and strength instead of feeling like yeah easy for you to yeah. say so that's a beautiful question and very important point uh, i totally agree with you here there are two things we can uh, uh, we can distinguish between one is the world inside of us, our inner world of experience. And then there's the world outside of us, the world of action. If we say, for example, the single mom, uh, my parents divorced when I was young, we didn't have much money. My mom was managing somehow. Um, and I have also had my fair part of challenges and still sometimes, you know, I've worked in, in jungle areas, eating rice and boiled leaves, you know, staying in bamboo huts. Uh, I've conducted programs in high security prisons in Africa and India and all kinds of things. Worked in slum areas with addicts. Um, so I've had a chance also to, to work with people in situations where you're saying that, you know, it sometimes it really is not fair. You know? And uh, the beauty is that if I look at whether it's uh, myself, if I look at my master, Gurudev Sri Ravi Shankar, he's the most content person in the world. He doesn't need anything. And then you see that he's not sitting in a cave somewhere or on a throne or, you know, just in an ashram. Or He's saying, no, because I don't need anything, I can give everything to the world. And he is traveling tirelessly, helping people. You know, he, he brokered peace, peace between the FARC rebels and the government in Colombia. He's traveling to so many places to help, uh, whether it is you know, to, to, to fight all the causes you can say, which are, which are not right. And the same thing, like you said, if someone is poor, then you cannot tell them just go and meditate. First, you help them build a roof, you know, let them have a home to stay or help them to get a job. So the Art of Living Foundation also our organization, it is doing so many service initiatives because you cannot say only meditate. But on a personal level, 
from my experience also and what I've seen is that one, yes, the moment, let's take the mom with the three children working overtime, you know, somehow, somehow keeping her head above water, you know, staying afloat. Once we, we understand that, yes, how I feel inside is something that I can address. Rather, I'm the only one who can do something about it. Mm will empower her to make a shift on that level. No, because the moment you feel like a victim, you feel that things are happening to you, being done to you again, you feel powerless. And that's one of the most difficult feelings. So it's very, and we've seen it even in prisons. No, I've worked with hardcore inmates and, and some of them, you know, if you hear their life story, I can almost agree to what they did. Not that I think it's right, but I can totally understand. It's like, if, yeah. if that is where you're coming from, that person didn't have a choice. You know, one person once stood up after a program and he said, you know, I'm in this prison because of you people. And he was pointing at us. Because he said, if I had this knowledge and these techniques 10 years ago, I would not have been here. Mm. You know, why were you then? So in a nice way, but also that he realized that, you know, if I had only had these things, I could have taken charge of my life. You know, if I had known, if I had understood. Mm -hmm. So the beauty is when that shift happens where you realize, no, but even then, even in the most miserable place, I can have the tools, I can have the knowledge, and I have the, the ability to change the way I feel, to change the way I experience my life. Because let us be honest, there are people who have everything. They were born in a wealthy family. They have the best education. And they're depressed. Yeah. They commit suicide. So again, when we realize it, I'm not saying you should not have good education, nice food. I wish everybody had it. And we are working towards it to, to help more people achieve that. But when you realize that, no, but this is in my control, then how you feel is something you can change. So you come out of that victim consciousness. You know? And that is very important for anything if you want to come up in life. At the same time, this acceptance is something that is not passive. You know, it's not that, okay, so you accept everything. I can be peaceful amidst any situation. And then you don't do anything about it. No. Then we take action. If you see, okay, again, the example, if you take my master, he's traveling tirelessly all over the world for the last 40 years, more than 40 years. Now, it's not nice for your body, you know, continuous jet lag, so many places and meeting people all the time with their problems. It's not enjoyable, but I've not seen him get stressed or angry even once, you know. And he sleeps only a few hours and then he's able to do all those things. And he's not because we need to help people. He genuinely cares. Otherwise, you cannot do that. He said, these people there, whether it is in, in the US or in, in Asia or in Africa, these are also my people. No, I need to help them at least whatever I can do. So the beauty is, if you say, yes, there are many things in the world that are uh, not good, that, that can definitely do with improvement. But the beauty is when we are peaceful inside, when we are calm and we are composed, you will find that you will also be much more effective mm. in your actions. Because mm. I am sure... All of us would have had this experience that, you know, something unjust happens, something that is not fair. Say you get an email CC to your boss about someone complaining or, you know, accusing you of something which you didn't do or putting something on you. And you feel terrible. You know, you're doing it so sincerely, or it could be a family member or a friend, whatever. And then in that moment of feeling hurt, maybe then feeling because you've hurt, you feel angry or you feel upset or frustrated. And you respond, you react, you know, you send a message back or an email or whatever. And maybe CC a few more people, you know, just to really get your point across. But then later when you calm down and you see it, then you say, oh, you know, but actually, you know, almost always 99% of the time you will regret what you did. Maybe you don't regret it, you acted. Like I have so many experiences myself over the years. Where it's not that I regret that I took an action, but because my mind was disturbed, it was not perfect. You know, I, I maybe 
I made it worse, or maybe it was just really not great, or it didn't help. But like, same in relationships, you know, someone comes at you and they feel hurt, or maybe they got stressed at work and they're taking it out on you or whatever. And then in that moment, because all you feel is that pain or that hurt or that anger or frustration, you snap back at them, you do something, or you throw a plate or you break up with them or whatever. But then later, when you look back, you think, oh, you know, but this was not the best way to handle it. Or actually, I didn't mean it. Or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so a lot of that is where we, we sabotage ourselves a little. And that is why if you see in society also, there, these two things need to go together. You need to have the right understanding, the knowledge, and at the same time, also take the proper action. You know? mm -hmm. This, for those of us who know, you know, in India, you have this, the elephant-headed god, Ganesha, you know, Ganapati. So uh, it doesn't mean he looks like that, but it's a symbol. So why did they take an elephant? I mean, we could do a whole podcast about the symbolism of Ganesha, but for those of you who have, who have seen him, you know, Ganapati, one is that he has a trunk, right? And a trunk has two actions. It's something what they call a karmendriya. It is something that can act like an, an organ of action. So it can grasp. It's, it's like a hand, you know. But it's also a gnanendriya, which means it's an organ of perception. It's one of the senses. So he can touch, he can smell. So the symbolism, they say, because the energy of Ganesha, why people go to a Ganesha temple or chant some mantras for Ganesha, or one of the reasons is because they say he's the remover of obstacles. Mm. He can prevent obstacles and he can remove the obstacles. That is what he's famous for. So if you have a problem, you go to Ganesha, he will help you fix the problem. And why is that? Because that energy of Ganesha, that vibration or that quality is the quality of where you have the understanding, the, the knowledge. That's why he has such a big head. You know, elephant is the biggest head. So you have all that knowledge and awareness. And at the same time, you act also. So where the action and the knowledge come together, that is how we can remove the obstacles. So in society, there are many people who know that some things are not right, or maybe many things are not right. You know, most people are good people. They don't agree with uh, a war being fought or people being discriminated against or people being, uh, you know, treated unfairly or not given what they need. Or Almost all of us agree, but if we agree and just sit at home, if we don't act mm. on it, nothing is going to change. We can keep complaining. The same time, you see some people who are very active. They want things to change. But if we don't have the right understanding of how to do it, then that can be a problem also. So you see sometimes there is a regime, maybe a dictator somewhere, and then the people rise up, they get rid of the dictator. But if there is no proper plan how to take it forward from there, sometimes the country becomes even more of a mess you know? or uh, say you you spill some ketchup on your shirt i have a nice white shirt you know usually i wear white so it's a big challenge you spill some ketchup then if you just take a cloth and try to wipe it off if you don't do it in the right way the stain is going to be even worse you know? yeah. so to remove the obstacle or attend to the things we need to have that awareness and then act with it so again that inner peace that calm not feeling like a victim or, or guilty, you know, these are two extremes, that will help us to really also fix our problems. You know? And we've seen this. We've seen people who have been able to come up in life with such adverse situations, mm. you know? But then it, it needs that little bit of skill, support, of course. And, but this is, this is, is essential. Otherwise, you see, and I've also personally seen this, unless you take away that unless you help to make that shift inside a person, they may feel poor rest of their life. You can keep giving them things for free, free education, free house, free money. They will always feel poor. They will never feel empowered. So it, it's a fine balance of finding that inner peace and then having the outer dynamism. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why, you know, spir spiritual knowledge, spirituality, is so essential in today's world because it's not something different from, you can say, normal life. You know, Sometimes people say, I'm in the material world, I have my normal life, and then there's spirituality. They come for a meditation retreat or a yoga class, and they say, oh, for a few moments I feel so peaceful, but then I have to get back to the real world, you know, how to, how to man manage that. Or The thing is, actually, spirituality is not something separate. Mm. 
It is just a different look at life where you feel more connected, you're more aware. So you do all your normal things, but you can do it with a spiritual angle where you say, I'm not just doing my job to earn. I'm also doing it so I can contribute something, you know. Mm. You do the things you do, but you do it with awareness. You do it as a nice person. You know? You're able to, you start being able to enjoy everything. Because otherwise what happens? Without that uh, dispassion, you know, this is a word that has been misused quite a bit, but in a way it's a beautiful word because when you feel so content, in the yoga scriptures they say, when you feel so content that you don't need anything else, when you're no longer craving for anything, that is real dispassion. So it doesn't mean you have to give up everything and live miserably without anything. No, it's rather that you found everything inside of you. So you're no longer dependent on the outside. And my master once very beautifully said, he said, in a world that we live in now, where we see so much of passion, you know, passion is kindled in us with every advertisement we see. Everything is prompting you to want more, to be more, to achieve more. You should see the world, you should become famous, have 1 million followers on Instagram or have a big house or the beautiful girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever it may be. So that passion keeps getting kindled, fueled in us. But if you don't balance that passion with this passion, mm. that passion will turn into either aggression or depression. Mm. And that's what we see. If you don't take that few moments every day, you know, like 15, 20 minutes, just sit and go inward, meditate, let the mind calm down, feel it for a moment. I don't need anything. I have everything I need. You know, Then what happens? That passion will keep increasing. And then you feel, I should have this. I need that to be happy or I deserve that. And then if you don't get it, because it's not realistic for everybody, then either you feel depressed or you get angry. You, mm -hmm. you get aggressive. Because I, why should I not have it? I should have it. I deserve it. Why? You know, then you say, oh, I have not given the opportunities. How am I supposed to be happy? I don't have a Ferrari or I don't have a big house. Or, or you become depressed. Oh, because I don't have it. Now what will I do? Yeah, beautiful. Very beautiful, this knowledge. Yeah. Thank you so much for diving, diving into it. I think it's so important to to see it like from different angles to to really understand it and to yeah. also include different um um yeah life experiences from different people um yeah definitely especially is, in today's time you know, yeah. today's world what is your your definition of spirituality what would you say is spirituality well I asked my master once, you know, like, how do you define it? Because nowadays also this world, we see it everywhere. It's used, misused. Uh, sometimes it sounds very airy-fairy, you know, like this hippie type or even like voodoo things. And he said something very beautifully. He said, you know, if we have to define it, because the world is, a word just means as much as your definition of it, right? True. He said, I would define it as anything that uplifts your spirit. Mm. That is spirituality. You know? Beautiful. Oh, I love and if you see, like we say, you know, in English language, at least we say that, you know, uh, sometimes you feel that uh, you say someone is in high spirits, you know, or you're very spirited. You know, what does that mean? That you feel very happy. You have a lot of energy. You feel good. You connect with people. Mm -hmm. you know? So spirituality is it. Uh, it doesn't have to. It's not only meditation. Yes, you can say these techniques like breathing techniques, like yoga, like meditation. Yes, they are one way to uplift your spirit, to increase your energy level, to make you more aware, more peaceful. But this includes dancing, it includes singing, uh, you know, it can be it can be prayer, it can be serving people, you know, doing some community service or doing something nice for other people. It can be you appreciating the nature, it can be you really enjoying cooking your meal. You know? So anything in life can be spiritual if it uplifts your spirit. And the beauty of spirituality, like I said, it doesn't have to be something different. My day is mostly what most other people do. I have to do my emails, my phone calls, uh, you know, my, my work. Uh, I'm not sitting and meditating all day. I, I'm meeting people, managing projects, conducting programs. But yes, when you do it with a sense of awareness, all of those things can become spiritual in the sense that it uplifts you. 
rather mm. than it draining your energy or, you know, being another, just another thing on your to-do list. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Love this. Um, I have one question I ask all of my guests on the show. And the question is, imagine you live a really long, beautiful, fulfilled life. So you get really, really old. You do yeah, that's everything. the plan. Yeah, that <laughs> is the plan. And But one day there will be the last day of your life. Yes. And I would be there by coincidence. And I would say, I'm so sorry. Lucky me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say, I'm so sorry. Everything you ever did is deleted. Mm -hmm. Like your okay. book is deleted. The courses you did deleted. Like nothing yeah. there. What you ever yeah. said, recorded, done. Yeah. But I do have a white <laughs> sheet of paper and a pen. And you could write down three things, three wisdoms, three um, ideas, thoughts that you would humanity to remember if nothing else you ever said is left what would you write down but no pressure no only pressure. one day huh? yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so because i'm not going i cannot take 24 hours to finish this podcast with you so let me see if i can come up with it on the spot <laughs> um, i think the first would be again something that I learned from my master, but it's always stuck with me. It's a beautiful quote, which says, joy is love for what is, mm. and sorrow is love for what is not. Mm. So this would be the first one. The second would be the one I mentioned earlier, I think, that live life as an not as a pursuit of happiness, but as an expression of happiness. And the third would be that lasting peace, joy, love and fulfillment that each one of us is looking for is not something that can be found outside in the world that is ever changing. It is something that is already present in the one thing that is not changing, which is our true nature or consciousness. So look for it there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything you shared. Um, for me, the conversation was very fulfilling and um, very helpful and um yeah, it's just always beautiful for me to to have those conversations as well, because kind of to be in this dialogue and to always have this feeling of, yeah, this is so like resonating with my own truth. Um, I, I think that's very beautiful. Like it's it's just so helpful to to stay clear also on your own path when, when you have conversations like this. That yes. Is always very helpful. So thank you for everything, every, everything you shared and for your perspective and for your knowledge and your wisdom and um, also for bringing all this ancient wisdom to, to, to Germany in this case or to the Nether yeah. Netherlands or to the Western world in general because I think um, it's so helpful to, to have that knowledge and what you said, to, to have tools that help our mind to really calm down, to be clear, to be focused, to be filled with love. And um, I always say like, there where you're coming from in the inside is where you're going on the outside. And um, this is for me always Definitely. very helpful to, to understand, okay, where, where you in the inside will have an effect in, in effect on what you will see on the outside so thank you so much for everything you do for your work um, for your contribution and um, for all the thoughts you you shared with us and i will put everything in the show notes so the link to your books to your work to the art of living for everyone who, who wants to learn more about it or the breathing technique as well um so um they will find you and um thank you so much Wonderful. thank you thank you, thank you. My truly, truly, my pleasure. Like I said, and uh, you know, it's it's beautiful. I wish you all the best with this wonderful initiative. And like you said, you know, it's uh, it's important in today's world that we make people aware that there are these tools and techniques, and and there are so many paths. You know, everybody can can find their path. But uh, 
this is that that spiritual aspect. You know, we can all be happy, holy, and confident. Definitely. So <laughs> I wish you all the very best with your podcast. Thank and you. uh, if there's anything else I can do, like just find me and uh, yeah, Thank wish you all the very best. For you as well. Thank you. Ich hoffe, dass du ganz viel aus dieser Folge für dich mitnehmen konntest, richtig schön aufgeladen bist mit deiner eigenen spirituellen Anbindung und inspiriert bist, hier auch deinen eigenen spirituellen Weg für dich zu gehen und für dich deine Praxis vielleicht zu vertiefen oder zu gucken, wie du das noch mehr für dich einfach leben und zum Ausdruck bringen kannst. Und wie immer, schau super gerne bei mir bei Instagram vorbei, at Laura Marlina Seiler. Lass mir unter dem Post von heute deine Gedanken da. Und wenn du gerne etwas haben möchtest, womit du im Alltag mehr meditieren kannst, wenn du mich gerne in deiner kleinen Handtasche haben möchtest, in deinem Handy und ich dich jeden Tag mit Voice Messages begleiten soll und mit Meditationen begleiten darf, dann kannst du dir jetzt meine kostenlose App runterladen, die Higher Self App, wo du so viele Meditationen von mir findest, wo du jeden Tag äh, Messages von mir bekommst, wo wir äh, Affirmationen drin haben, wo du so schöne Sachen machen kannst, wo du alle meine Online-Kurse natürlich auch drin findest, wo es Masterclasses drin gibt. Also lad sie dir runter und ähm, da hast du so deinen kleinen spirituellen äh, Begleiter immer irgendwie dabei und kannst im Alltag dich einfach mal ausklinken und in dir selber einklinken findest du überall, wo es Apps gibt, Higher Self App, ganz viel Freude damit und ich wünsche dir jetzt einen wunderschönen Tag. Es ist so, 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 so schön, dass es dich gibt. Glaub an dich, mach dein Ding, geh da raus, zeig dich, pass gut auf dich auf und enjoy life. Rock on und Namaste, deine Laura.